Hello and welcome to the Vicar's Study at St John's in Paul. It's good to have you with us. A particular welcome if you're, you're new to St John's. Now our services this Sunday are at 9 o'clock and 10.30 and we'll be continuing our series that we're looking at at the moment by the presence of Jesus. Uh, but at the same time, we know that not, we recognise that not everybody's going to be able to get to one of those services. Uh, so we're continuing with our online ministry as well as the on-site things, hence this video. And uh, in a moment, I'll be unpacking a bit of scripture and uh, then leading us in prayer. But also, I'll encourage you to sing the same songs at home that we sing in church, which are love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed in the good times, and then it goes on to talk about in the bad times. Blessed be your name. And in it all, thine be the glory. That's our last song today. Thine be the glory risen conquering sun now our, our bible passage uh today just picks up directly straight up immediately after our passage from last week and it's about the uh, the disciple who always has the adjective doubting put ahead of his name now thomas also known as didymus one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless the, I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hand, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I love doubting Thomas. Uh, because he's very human. He doesn't take the word of the other ten. Uh, he, he takes a bit of convincing that Jesus really was risen. And therefore, uh, he's risen, therefore he's alive, and he's with us. Uh, today's passage, as I said, just picks up directly from where we were last Sunday. It's all about evidence, and indeed, what follows from that evidence, working out some of the implications from it. Our passage is just eight verses, but in it you get the word believe and believing six, time, six times. Uh, Thomas is the first to mention it, and uh, he says, I will not believe unless dot, dot, dot. Um, uh, and then Jesus picks up on that and, and says, stop doubting and believe, and so on. And he, he talked about believing three times. And then at the end, John, uh, right, who's writing this down, picks up, uses that same word, believing, twice, uh, that uh, you know, he, he shows clearly why he's writing. Anyway, along the way today, we're going to consider uh, two types of evidence. We'll consider, first of all, uh, some physical evidence, albeit it's a bit yucky, a bit gruesome, uh, some written evidence, why John is that is writing this. Obviously, it's a... It's the same John who wrote this, this book, uh, who after whom St. John's Church is named, and he's explaining his motives for writing it down. But anyway, before we get to that, let's start with Thomas. Uh, 
because Thomas has said that he will not believe unless he sees and feels for himself. Uh, he's heard from the others, but he hasn't believed. He wants to, want to, want to find it out, out for himself. And indeed, lots of us are like that. If we think about our passage for a moment, then in, in verse 26, what happens is exactly the same as what's happened a few verses earlier, uh, where some of those same things are repeated. Uh, Jesus has somehow managed to walk through a locked door and he's coming to their midst and he said peace be with you and we, th we thought last week didn't we about how wonderful it is to have God's peace in the middle of all the ups and downs and twists and turns of life but uh, then in verse 27 it done, it's not just a repeat of last week because uh, it, it gets much more up close and personal with Thomas and uh, Jesus says okay then I know of course Jesus knows what his doubts are he says okay uh, come and feel my wounds then put your hand in in mine and uh, you know feel and you know, that that's not very nice and then put your hand into my side and if you think about it though the wounds in his hands are quite or in his wrists are quite small because uh, they're made by nails but the wound in the side is bound to be a bit bigger, a lot bigger, because it's made by a spear that's being chucked into Jesus' side. So uh, where, whereas Thomas could probably feel what the small wounds with, with just one finger, uh, he probably has to put his whole hand in and feel a bit squelchy. Um, think about that, so it's pretty really yucky when you think about the details. But that is what is going on here. And that's what Thomas wants, and that's what Jesus knows. And Jesus says, okay then, come and feel. And then he says immediately a command. He says, stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting. That's why the word doubting is always, not always, but often put in, in front of Thomas's name. Stop doubting and believe. And then... In verse 29, Jesus shows quite clearly that he's not just thinking about Thomas. He's thinking about people like you and me who will come later. Because he says, uh, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So there's something there that includes you and me as well as Thomas. Now, in uh, the mid-1990s, uh, when I was at Vicar Factory, I attended a, a series of lectures on John's Gospel. And I remember still every single one of those began with the words of verse 31. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. I expect you've noticed that uh, on the uh, stands at the back of back of church then there are always uh, some John's Gospels around and that's because this is powerful stuff. The reason uh, that those are there is the good news of Jesus speaks for itself. I became a Christian because some somebody gave me a New Testament and uh, I encountered Jesus in its pages so i know this is powerful stuff and, uh, and i do hope if you ever wondered and taken a bit of convincing uh i may maybe you'll you'll just feel that you want to come and obviously these are free just 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 grab one take take it and read it and digest it for yourself now in verse 28 jesus uh, jesus has just uh allowed thomas to have her feel those wounds and, and Thomas has, the penny has dropped and he said that he's realized there really is the risen Jesus and what does Thomas say my Lord and my God we can learn from this what and from what Jesus replies something about uh, what it is to uh, say Jesus is risen it's not just an interesting fact or statement it has implications and indeed Thomas is spelling some of these out he says my lord 
the Lord to whom I'm going to submit and the Lord I'm going to follow and my God. God in human form. That's who Jesus is. And we can learn from that, not just from what Thomas says, but from the way Jesus responds to it. Because he doesn't say, oh, Jesus does not say, oh, steady on, that's a bit strong. Um, and that's why I get so frustrated when people say, oh, Jesus never claimed to be God. He did. And that's what he's doing here. That's what he was executed for, actually. But all his words, his deeds, his miracles, and ultimately the empty tomb all cried out that he really is God. They back up this claim that he is God. Jesus spoke and John writes about the evidence for Jesus being risen. And people later would come, as, as this passage foresees, come, they would um, come to the same position as Thomas, if you like. There's, how did Thomas respond to the risen Jesus? Well, the passage tells us, my Lord and my God. But what about us? We weren't there then. We're not included specifically uh, by name in, in this passage. But uh, people who come later, we make up our mind. And we need also to reach a verdict on the empty tomb. So I want to finish with uh, just a question really, which is how do you respond to the risen Jesus? Now in the jury room, when considering evidence, then everyone gives their opinion. And if it's a difficult case, you probably have to go several times around the table just trying to work things out, where, what it is you believe and why and so on, and, and just working it, working it out. Everyone gives their own opinion, makes up their own mind uh, from the evidence that is presented to them. And that's kind of what's going on here. The evidence is presented and then the choice, the decision, is being being made. John writes, that, of course, that he wants people to believe. But not to stop there, that by believing, they will have life in Jesus' name. It's great being a Christian. It's great knowing that God is with us in all the ups and downs and twists and turns of life. Thomas came to realise that. John wrote his book to convince people uh, that this is true. And I hope you will both believe this and that by believing you will have a life in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you that you knew and understood Thomas's doubts and you know and you understand our doubts. Thank you for the physical evidence, the grittiness of it all. And thank you that this was written down by John so we can chew it over for ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sorry, Lord, for times when we have run away from the evidence, run away from making decisions about Jesus. Sorry for the times when we've got stuck in our doubts and indeed, or indeed passed on our doubts instead of passing on the evidence for Jesus. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, prompt us to believe. Help us to work through the implications of believing that Jesus was risen. Jesus is therefore alive and with us now. Please remind us of that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we'll close with the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught his followers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Incidentally, if uh, thinking through the evidence today has whetted your appetite for thinking further about Jesus, then I'll encourage you to think, maybe you might want to think about, one of the things we do every year, and we'll, we'll do this autumn, is uh, run the Christianity Explored course, and uh, you might want to get in touch with me, and, and if you're thinking about, if you'd like to spend some time thinking uh, through a bit more about some key questions about why Jesus came, who he is, what why he came, and what it means to follow him. Those are big questions, and all of them are part of the course in Christianity Explored. So feel free to join us for that. It's always good fun, and uh, yeah, a meaningful time to think things through together. Anyway, that's it for today, and I'll see you next time.